At the heart of computer science is problem solving. Before we can use computers to solve complicated problems, we need to be able to analyze a problem and translate our high concept ideas about a problem solution into instructions that a computer can then execute. The computer itself is not smart, but it can accomplish tasks much faster than any human can. With our direction, the computer can be put to use in solving all sorts of complicated problems. What kinds of problems do computer scientists solve? One problem that Google is constantly addressing is how to best return the web pages you are looking for based on the search terms you've selected. NASA has written millions of lines of code to support their Mars exploration rover so that it may navigate the Martian surface and communicate information back to scientists on Earth. Doctors need medical devices, and all these devices need software to connect the human user and the various mechanical components. On a much simpler scale, I wrote a short program the other day to help organize my digital music files by artist name and album title. Most of these problems are clearly related to computers, and many are hard to think about without knowing what a computer is capable of. A computer solves problems by following an algorithm, which is essentially an ordered set of instructions. Humans encounter problems every day that can be analyzed in the same way we do in computer science. For example, when we buy furniture from a store, we usually receive some kind of instructions as to how to build it. These steps are numbered and the parts are labeled. We can follow these steps in order to build the final piece of furniture. Other examples include baking a cake or doing our morning workout. We learn the steps, repeat certain ones, change others depending on what conditions are satisfied. We also know that many possible solutions exist, even if some are more efficient than others. There are other skills that come into play when we problem solve. We're going to look at each of these briefly. Computer science is full of what we call abstractions. These are like generalizations that help us solve related problems. Consider a computer trying to recognize a face and an image so it can tag that person by name. This can be a hard problem. How would a computer even know that there's a person in the picture when it can only look at one pixel at a time? Luckily, we know some details about how faces work and how they're proportioned. We can generalize these details, eyes, nose, mouth, hair, skin, etc. Once we know how, what to expect, we can start to solve the problem of recognizing that there's a person in a picture. From there, we can use specifics about that particular person to tag them. Changing the question from which person to is there a person is an example of how we can use abstraction and pattern recognition to solve a problem. Another useful problem-solving technique is what we call decomposition. Take a complicated problem and break it into pieces. Each of these pieces can then be tested separately before being connected to solve our task. Consider the task of mapping a path from your house to school. There are lots of ways to approach this task, too many to consider in most cases. One way to handle it is to break each step of the task down. Which is the best way to exit your neighborhood? Which of the shortest routes? has the least traffic? Which school entrance do we want to reach? And, and can we get there so that our car faces an easier right turn as opposed to a left turn into traffic? Related to decomposition is the concept of parallel processing. Most computers have multiple processors, which means we can divide up tasks assuming that they can be done independently. Assume you're putting together a jigsaw puzzle. Perhaps you can give your kid sister all the edge pieces. Your mom, all the ones that are mostly blue that look like the sky, while you take one of the big buildings on. This can be more efficient than having everyone work on the same problem. With experience and with some analysis tools, we can also look at several solutions to find the best possible result. This component of problem solving can be one of the most effective, which is why we want to stress patience and practice in this course. You will only develop your problem solving skills by putting them to use. A good programmer and computer scientist is usually one who is willing to take risks, and one that can learn from unsuccessful tries. In the next section, we'll look at a common abstraction in computer science that helps us understand the core concepts behind modern-day computers.